President Rodrigo Duterte's net worth grows by more than 3 million pesos in the last six months since he assumed the presidency. That's according to his latest statement of assets, net worth and liabilities or SALN released by the office of the Ombudsman Friday. As of December 31, 2016, Duterte's net worth stands at 27.4 million pesos compared to 24 million pesos in June 2016. Duterte's net worth grew in December because of the more than 3 million peso increase in his cash on hand and bank. The president's investments slightly decreased from 3.9 million pesos in June last year to 3 million pesos in December. Duterte's Sal N also lists other personal properties worth 1 million pesos which were not in his June 30, 2016 Sal N. Duterte also no longer has business interests listed in his latest Sal N. In June, he listed himself as incorporator of Honda Cars in General Santo City and Poeng UE Foundation Incorporated in Davao City. The president's liabilities also shrink from 1.1 million pesos to 1 million pesos. The president was able to pay 100,000 pesos worth of personal loans from Davao-based businessman Samuel Uy. Uy is a friend of Duterte and a 2016 campaign donor. Uy donated 30 million pesos to the Duterte campaign based on Duterte's statement of contributions and expenditures. Senator Alan Cayetano says his American citizenship issue is different from the case of former Foreign Affairs Secretary Perfecto Yasai Jr. Yasai's appointment was earlier rejected by the Commission on Appointments for lying about his U.S. citizenship. President Rodrigo Duterte earlier this week announced Cayetano will be the next Foreign Secretary. Cayetano was born to a Filipino father, former Senator Rene Cayetano, and American mother Sandra Schramm. He says this means he is both a natural-born Filipino citizen and American national by birth. Yasai is a natural-born Filipino citizen who became an American in 1986. He renounced his U.S. citizenship in 2016 but still has to formally reacquire his Filipino citizenship. Cayetano says, quote, It's different when you were born with those citizenships and you're allowed to use that. It's different when you're a Filipino citizen who relinquished it for a foreign citizenship and tried to get it back. He adds, quote, By both laws, the kid is a citizen of both countries. It's not the child's fault. Cayetano admits he ran for Taguig City Councilor in 1991 and Vice Mayor in 1995 as a dual citizen, but says there is nothing wrong with it. He says there was no law then requiring a candidate to revoke his or her foreign citizenship. Cayetano renounced his U.S. citizenship in 1998. The Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Act, which allows Filipinos to hold foreign citizenships, was approved only in 2003. The law also prohibits dual citizens from being appointed or elected to office. The House Justice Committee will begin reviewing the first impeachment complaint against President Rodrigo Duterte on Monday. The panel, chaired by Oriental Mindoro Representative Reynaldo O'Malley, will determine whether or not the complaint is sufficient in form and substance. A majority vote among the Justice panel members is needed to decide if there is probable cause. Otherwise, the committee will junk the complaint. Magdalo Representative Gary Alejano filed the first impeachment complaint against Duterte in March. Alejano wants the president impeached for his alleged involvement in a Davao death squad, the bloody war against drugs, the reported ghost employees of the Davao city government when Duterte was mayor, his alleged unexplained wealth, and the president's approach in handling the West Philippine Sea dispute with China. The odds are against Alejano because at least 267 out of the 293 lawmakers in the House are allied with the president. The Commission on Audit says the Defense Department spent almost 75 million pesos in unauthorized expenses from its Quick Response Fund. State auditors say 29.81 million pesos was used for supplies and equipment and 44.47 million pesos for the repair and construction of buildings. But Co assessed the way the money was spent supposedly contradicted the fund's purpose. It says the fund should be used as a quote, standby fund for relief and recovery programs, meant to make sure areas hit by disaster 
normalize as fast as possible. The amount was apparently sourced from the Defense Department's 2014 and 2015 QRF funds. COA says that $29.8 million was used for the quote, procurement of equipment and goods, which is a pre-disaster activity, while the 44.47 million pesos was used for the quote, repair and construction of buildings, which do not fall on the definition of QRF. The DND says it did not violate any standing policies, pointing out that its role in disasters includes leading, quote, command and control activities. It adds it involves organizing, training, and giving equipment to first responders from the armed forces of the Philippines. <music> Moscow surprises Washington Thursday by releasing pictures of a closed-door meeting between United States President Donald Trump and Russia's top diplomat. The images show a grinning Trump shaking hands with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and the Russian ambassador during an Oval Office meeting. The Wednesday meeting is already seen as a major diplomatic coup for the Kremlin, a red carpet welcome just months after being hit with U.S. sanctions for meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Veteran diplomats question why Trump agreed to host the diplomats. U.S. administrations often treat Oval Office meetings as a type of currency, dangling the prospect of a high-profile sit-down to gain leverage or concessions in negotiations. The photos compound the perception that Russia had won a diplomatic victory and that the White House was outmaneuvered. White House officials say Russian President Vladimir Putin requested a meeting after his recent face-to-face -face with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in Moscow. The White House was told an official Russian photographer would be present, implying the images would be for the historical record and not necessarily made public. When the images were published across the world via Russian state media, the White House raged that Moscow had misled it. But Russian's foreign ministry says the U.S. quote, did not ask us to refrain from publishing these photographs. 